we're turning there to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 9, verse 6. Verse 6. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children, and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men, which were before the house. Wow. The word of the Lord for the people of God, you can take your seats. I, saints, I've got to confess, when I chose this topic, I thought it was going to be all happy sermons. You know, I'm just like a kid at play. I always tell you, God well, gives me a, a series, and I just go around, I just hit in the words, and I say, now, what am I going to get from the Old Testament? What am I going to get from the New Testament? And then, of course, I read it because I've got to pull out of it the topic. And I get generally what it's saying. But once I go in debt, oh boy. And so we continue with the year theme, Kingdom Watchers. Kingdom Watchers. And then we are on the series, Little Children. Little Children. And today I want to speak from the sermon topic, Marked Children. Marked Children. I begin. A mark, an identifying symbol that distinguishes a person, place, or thing from another person, place, or thing. You know, someone can show you a picture of a place in Bermuda, and there is something unique about the picture that makes it different from any other place in Bermuda. It is marked. Now, I don't want to place salt in your non-traveling wounds, However, one of the most common occasions when we speak to something being marked is in reference to our luggage. It is marked with a unique tag, and if you remember, if you can, to pull it back, we are told to check the marked luggage tag carefully because some luggage looks, alike. looks the same, yeah, looks alike. You remember that? <laughs> How I miss hearing that over the intercom system. Then there are times of strong earthquakes, floods, or something catastrophic. And you begin to see all over social media people communicating that they are marked safe. When babies are born, they are often connected to one of the parents more closely because of a mark, a birthmark, or the dimples, or the widow's peak. I am slightly amused each time I see the birthmark that I have, like my mom. Mm. Each time I see it and see my own, I do declare that I am her offspring. <laughs> Church, likewise, we are children of God. And as such, God is expecting that we are the carriers of certain markers on our spiritual genetic code. Now, before we were drafted in relationship with God as our father, God had chosen out a people to be his people, his children. Deuteronomy 14, 1 and 2, it reads, Ye are the children of the Lord your God. Ye shall not cut yourselves, nor make any boldness between your eyes for the dead. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself, above all the nations that are upon the earth. God is speaking to Israelites, and here God is telling them specifically the kind of marks that he does not want them to have. They are his children, and he wants them to be marked differently than other people. Uh, they are marked with holiness. Uh, yes, they will live under certain rules and regulations. Listen, when God gives instructions, they are not suggestions. They are not options. This is no multiple choice. God has an all-seeing eye of omniscience. In other words, God sees all and God knows all. 
The knowingness of God ought to drive humanity to obedience. See, that scares me. <laughs> For there should be a certain amount of reverential fear that keeps God's children on the right track. Uh, this is what the law was for. It was meant to keep the people in good standing with God. Yet the truth is that humanity will often be led astray. They will yield to their own whims, wants, and ways. They will find a reason to circumvent the law of God and situate themselves where they want to be. <laughs> How often the Israelites rebelled against the fact that they were the children of God. And they were supposed to be faithful to God and yet found themselves going after the ways of foreign places. They often longingly admired the ways of the ungodly, and this resulted in them suffering as servants and slaves. When God had called them to be righteous and rulers. Today we will travel through a text and see how important God takes being marked as his. Oh, and when we are marked as his, we must behave as his children. See, that's, that's the lining up. Everybody wants to be a child of God, but not everybody wants to line up with what God has said as the stipulations. So let's understand the text in full as we cover the following three points. Point number one, the voice products. The voice products. Point number two, the victims Providence, the victims, providence. And point number three, the vision, prophetic. The vision, prophetic. All right, let's travel to point number one, the voice products, the voice products. Here we have the prophet Ezekiel. I know it might seem as if the prophet is about doom and gloom. Yet I must warn you that you want a prophet in the room. A true prophet. Why? For a prophet will be the voice of God speaking to a people. Indeed, this passage of scripture speaks to the people of that day. It speaks to the people of today. And it speaks of what shall be in that day to come. Church, this message stands. It yet stands as a dire warning for the people of God to make herself ready. Lord have mercy, we'll get ready for a football game. We'll get ready for the movies. We'll get ready for dinner. We'll get ready for this. We'll get, can I tell you we need to get ready for the rapture? Listen, we, we are not ready in ourselves for a party or a dinner date or for a movie. No, we are yet making ourselves ready for the rapture. We, the church, are the bride of Christ. And can't separate that. I feel sorry for some of the bride, the five foolish ones, but they are not tupped up with oil. Pastor, how do you know if you're tupped up with oil? If you're already tired and want to go home? If you came in the door ready to leave out, if you just wanted to make your presence known to say you were here, you don't, you don't have enough oil. If every song to you just wanted to finish, you, you know, it went on about three, four minutes, you're like, that's enough, that's good, that's good, that's good. You don't have enough oil. You see me, I, they have to call me to preach because I'm ready, are we, are we finished? That's all the songs? because I kind of want to just stay. I want to get oiled up. I want to make sure that I'm in the right mood, the right place of reflection as I stand behind this holy place. So I love praise and worship. Yet the foolish, the five foolish ones, that's 50% of the church, don't miss it. There were 10 virgins, all knew about what was to take place, all had the right equipment, but they didn't have enough oil. Church, I'm here to tell you that if you 
If you are going to be a victor in the year 2020, a, a victor in the year 2021 to come, you're going to have to make sure that your oil is topped up. And might I say, this is not uh, the gas station where they're going to serve you. You've got to have South service. You've got to know how to top up your own oil. Because it just might be that your brother or your sister to the left or to the right, they ain't in an oily type of mood. So you got to, hey, you got to make sure that you, you can feel God's presence for yourself. You can feel his glory for yourself. If no one else in the room begins to praise and worship God, there, 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 there's got to be something in your mind, in your memory, that he brought you through this week that, that you said, hey, thank you, God, for that. And, and such experiences begin to oil the squeaky. Oil the squeaky wheel so that I can run for my Lord. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm going to do it. One song, y'all. I'm running for my Lord. I'm running for my Lord. I'm running for my Lord. I said I'm running for my Lord. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Just tell them I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost, fire baptized. I got Jesus on my side, and I can't run unless... You've been oiled. If you're squeaky, stop the car. Put the oil in. All right, all right. So we understand that that day will come, and we don't want it to overtake us as a thief in the night. Yet here in the text, Ezekiel, the prophet, is the voice. He speaks forth ah, that which God shows him. Huh? Hmm. I, God ain't shared me yet. Somebody get in a car. I, I'm just thinking about it, you know. Hold up. God ain't shared me yet. Some of you have traveled with me. I ain't never tell nobody to get in a husband or what. What? Is, I must be missing something. Ezekiel, his name is Ezekiel. Be sure. Ezekiel is not speaking what he wants to say. No, 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 quite the contrary. If he could, he would avoid this moment and avoid this message. Oh, I'm feeling you there, Ezekiel. Hmm. For it is a message of doom and destruction beyond and above this. It is a message of doom and destruction to a people who should know better. Ah, that's it right there. You see, th th this message isn't for the sinner. It, it, it's not even for the backslider. As we, it's for those who are in the house of God, attending to matters. It's become a ritual. You know you do what you do in the house. God's people are not safe. I, I, I want you to hear me, church. The chosen people, the did I say, I said the chosen people. The ch Come on now, I can see the Levites now. Chosen to serve, chosen to be at the altar, chosen to be in the inner court, chosen to, to represent the people before God, chosen. The chosen people are not safe because they are s simply the chosen people of God. No. The church and people are safe when their lives are lived according to the perfect will of God. Come on now, when was the last time you said, God, your will be done? God, not my way. God, I know what I want. Come on now. I I've been there, man. God, this is, where, this is what I want right here. You know, I'm, I'm good. God, you're good with me? This is what I want. And God didn't give me that. And I had to yield and I had to get my act together. I had to come under the leaning of the word of God and understand that, Maria, your ways are not perfect. It's God's ways that are perfect. Yeah. Mm. The will of God. So let me talk about the prophet Ezekiel so that you may understand why, ooh, this is going to be beautiful, why God uses him. Ezekiel, his name means God will strengthen. Now that's scary right there. If I was having a grandson, right now, I'm like, I don't think I want to name him Ezekiel. That's not the name. God will strengthen. Because you know what that means? You're going to need to be strengthened. 
Something going to be coming up in your life, Ezekiel. And so your name, this name, because I want you to know that in spite of all that you go through, whatever it is you're going to go through, yes. God's going to strengthen you. Yes. Hmm. Ezekiel was a part of a prophetic family who were carried away with the Babylonian captivity. He was 25 years old when that happened. Then five years later, at age 30, Ezekiel was called to the prophetic ministry. So right there, church, we want to align the prophet Ezekiel with beginning his ministry at the same age that Jesus began his ministry. Yep, yep, yep. Now, Ezekiel was married to a woman he described as the desire of his eyes. Now, come on up in here. Come on. He, one woman, man. The desire. Not, not among many. The desire. Wow. Let's understand further that Jesus Christ is married to the church. His bride, his only desire. Well, help somebody. Now, Ezekiel is told on the day of the revelation that we're reading about, this revelation, that his wife would die. This is to be compared with the death of the people of God because they had taken up the idolatrous ways of the heathen. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't do church and do the world. You can't be in church and out of church. You can't be a holy roller and then a whore. I said, the word is in the Bible. God is not going to be accepting of our wayward ways. It's always choose. Don't give me no, what? Don't give me any excuse or reason. You will never be able to reason out your way out of the will of God. So he's told that his wife is going to die. And, and, and this right here is compared with the people of God. And like I said, they're going their own way. Though Ezekiel would lose the love of his wife, watch this. God told him to steal up. S-T-E-E-L, up, steal up. In other words, strengthen up, boss. Tell him, steal up himself, for he is not to grieve the loss of his beloved. What? The desire of his eyes? The only woman that he ever wanted? She's going to leave prematurely? They won't even have children? And God says, get over it. Now you know why his name is Ezekiel. Well, God, you would have to strengthen me. Can grieve the loss of his beloved. Church, this foreshadows what will happen in the book of Revelation. As judgment occurs. Listen, thank you, Holy Spirit. He just showed me and talked to me. He said, Jesus ain't carrying no tissues. God ain't got no box of Kleenex. Because you, we individually make our choice. You, you will never have a sub story, SOB, a sub story. Well, God, you know, now I was in the church once, but do you remember Pastor Simon, right? Right? Um, um, she, she had my husband and I constantly, I'm making it a hump. <laughs> My husband and I were constantly, and, and she told my, my husband that if she don't submit, quit. <laughs> quit her, <laughs> divorce her. And so that, I knew that was against your will, God, but you know, it put such a bad taste in my mouth for pastors and preachers, especially female ones, that I decided that the best thing I could do was, you know, just go home. And I admit that while I was home, I got caught, you know, I'm going to the club. Oh, you can go to a club! But you can't come to the house of God. No, you shouldn't be doing them anyway, one or the other. See, we got, let me, let me park here a minute. See, we got a lot of people about four or five years ago telling Seaman, oh, let them go to the club, leave them, leave them, leave them. Let me tell you now, today they're not in any church director. 
I could show you something, church. Uh -uh. No, no, we're not going to be in both worlds. We've made a choice and not saying that we're not going to fail. Pastor Seaman has had plenty of moments that you ah, if I could do that one over. Oh, man. But you can. You move forward and you grow past the current moment to the next moment. No sub stories in heaven. Our tears will not convince God to let us in heaven. Gee, you better choose today. And so, church, this is a foreshadowing, as I said, of the judgment that occurs, watch this, as judgment must begin first at the house of God. I keep on telling you that. God is no hypocrite. He is not going to judge the world until he steps in and deals with the people that should know better. Church, you and I cannot be overwhelmingly shocked as we consider the state of the church today. She has taken up idol worship and even has members participating in idol competitions and even has members calling themselves by demonic titles such as a diva. The mixing of the unholy with the holy is unacceptable to Listen. I watch Netflix. I'm trying to, I, mean, I think I'm going to go to the whole mall, just watch all, all the movies that Andy and, and they lived happily ever after. This is the season. But I'm studying it, and I'm here to tell you that they have purposely placed in every movie a lesbian couple, homosexual, the boys look like girls, the flame and gay. And I'm like, this doesn't even go at the storyline. Oh, look how they twisted that in. You know why? Because I study it as a critic. I'm getting mad. I'm like, that's unnecessary. What is she in real life? Who would be with her if she done all that stuff on front? Yeah, I'm, I'm having conniptions. Pray for me. But yet what I see what's happening, and it's happening right here in Bermuda, you just keep on putting the wrong before the eyes. Just... It becomes a part of the acceptance, the brain. Now, it's not scary anymore. Yeah. You know, when I, hey, thank you, Holy Ghost. When, when I went, I did go Halloween as a child back in the day, right? Do you know when I wore, what was the name? The front cast by the friendly ghost <laughs> mask. That was scary. Not today. 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 Some of the masks that we're wearing that we have to wear, they're scary. <laughs> see, I'm trying to get you to see. They have made the scary thing the common thing, the acceptable thing. Sometimes I go in stores, if I go in stores at all, or up and buy people, I said, now I understand why robbers wear masks, because I don't even know who I'm speaking to half the time. Right. I say, they work. What is the pastor saying? That in order for the church, God's church, it's no different than the Israelites. Don't think it's any different. We're not that special. The Israelites, what they always doing, looking at other nations. Uh, isn't that what Lot did? Lot looked on Sodom and first he is by the gate, then he is inside the gate, then he is the mayor of the city. Church. Those of you with children and little ones around you, watch what they watch. Say, how is this trend in their mind? Hmm. And that's why judgment begins at the house of the Lord. We ought to know better. Verse 1, let's look at it. He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. Jerusalem is the capital city, and there is about to be administered capital punishment. There are crimes by humanity against God. <laughs> against God, watch this, in his holy place. See, 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 know your Bible. It's one thing for the heathen to sin. It's even one thing for people to see, and I'm talking Bible, outside of the temple. But when you, come on, Eli's sons, Hophni Phinehas, come on. 
But when you bring it inside the house of God, oh, God ain't winking, he ain't twinking, uh -huh. he ain't drinking with you. God is about to administer some corporal punishment. Oh, it's capital. And so the place that should house the presence of God now speaks of hollowness. For watch this, for the Shekinah of God has departed. This is where we are in the text. The glory of God is no longer in its glorious place. Do you know that the glorious place, that's why it's, it should be something when God's people get together. Because now we individually can be temples, which means that we can drive in our car and feel the glory of God. Come on now, we all got that special place in our homes and God speaks to us, Lord of mercy. Uh -huh. You know, yet when we get together, it should be that everybody has brought their own level of worship, their own level of reverence to God. And that's when God's people get together. What a time, what a time, what a time. Not that we have made time to be together, but that we are together when we house the presence of the Lord. And so this place that Ezekiel is in, the revelation, he sees that the glory of the Lord is no longer in this place. It is a place in name only. For the power of the name is no longer in residence. You can, I'm called this place, God told me, call it Shekinah. Listen. I don't ever listen. I just need one person. I know I got more. I just need one person. Two or three. Okay, I need two. Uh -huh. No, no, two or three. One other person than me. I gather in the place. And somebody who was desperate this week to get into the house of God. Somebody who knew that, hey, if I can make it to the house of God, I'm going to get fueled up for the week. I just need one person like that. If I can get to the house of the Lord, then every bit of pain, heartache, every bit of disappointment that I've experienced this past week, I'm going to watch God turn it around. I know it's just past midday, but for some people, midday can be midnight. But when you get in the house of the Lord with another saint, with another worshiper, then there is something, there's a kinship, there's a relationship. And by golly, gee, when you both start worshiping God, when you both start lifting up the name of Jesus, when you both start putting your hands up, when you both start dancing, you both clapping your hands, there is something divinely magnetic that that takes place in the house of the Lord. And what if that never happened? What if we all showed up, but we were just marked present? But God said, ain't no Holy Spirit there, huh? Ain't nobody desperate for my, my presence. Ain't nobody desperate to feel my glory. Ain't nobody desperate to get out of themselves. So, Ezekiel, he sees that the presence of God is no longer presiding over the house of God. Huh? I'm less worried about a presiding bishop or a presiding pastor. I want the Holy Ghost. Come preside. <laughs> you take preeminence. <laughs> preside. Let your presence be here. Reign, rule, abide in here. This is the cry that goes forth. Just as Ezekiel sounds the alarm for the destruction to begin, one day Jesus will sound, call for the sound of the alarm, and destruction will take place. Ezekiel, he hears the voice of God speaking to angels. <laughs> hey. mm -hmm. Speaking to angels to prepare the land for destruction. Why am I preaching these lessons? Prepare the land for destruction. This is not destruction for naught. They, the people, have rebelled against God. They have taken up the ways of the world and now have lost their right to be called righteous. They have, uh, the angels, destroying weapons. Church, these are weapons of death. This is no game. This is real condemnation. This is it. It's finally happened. Hmm. Verse 2. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lie toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, 
with a rider's ink horn by his side. Uh -huh. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. Let's deal with a couple of words. Well, let's deal first this word slaughter, coming from the Hebrew word mepatz, mepatz, meaning shattering, a smiting to pieces, breaking in pieces. See that? Oh, I thought God was about just unity. I said one day judgment's coming. Understand that this is not a slight thing. This is a destruction thing. This is no happy ending. This is no all things are working. This ain't no all things working for my good. No, this is because you have embraced the profane. Don't ask me to embrace things that are unlike God. Because you, Ezekiel speaking to the people, have embraced the profane, you will now suffer the consequences. There are six men and another that has the writer's ink horn by his side. The ink horn or the ink well. The picture here is that there is plenty to write with. <laughs> plenty to write with. They are at the brazen altar. Why here? The brazen altar was the altar of sacrifice. And church, if you don't voluntarily present yourself a living sacrifice, then you will become the sacrifice. Come on now, we talked about that. At the brazen altar, animals were sacrificed. Look at it in our Old Testament. Animals were sacrificed for the atonement of the sins of the people. So in essence, by God's people rejecting God's altar, they will now become the sacrifice. You see, this place of sacrifice was located in the courtyard. <laughs> I love this. In other words, before, before you got into the main sanctuary of the temple, you had to deal with the brazen altar. Let me say it another way. Before you came into the church proper, you had to deal with you. Get rid of you. Kill your own flesh. I hear your Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost just said, that's why, Seaman, you're not going to be able to deal with some people because they won't even deal with themselves. And if they don't deal with themselves at the brazen altar before they come inside the house, you can't change them because the brazen altar didn't change them. Come on, church. Yet sadly, the people have neglected to do this, and now judgment has come. God speaks to one who had his ear attuned, Ezekiel, to God, to the voice of God, and now he is the voice of God to the people of God. That takes me to point number two. The victims, providence. The victims, providence. The providence of God bespeaks of the sovereignty of God. <laughs> God will have his way. It doesn't matter what you and I choose to do. At the end of the day, God knows the beginning from the end, and God will meet you at the end of it all. I know it baffles the mind. It frustrates the logical thinking pattern of mankind, but that's what makes God God. Verse 3, and the glory... Hmm, and the glory of God, of the God of Israel, was going. That, that right there, see now, going. I ain't going, going, going. Going up from the cherub, whereupon he was, to the threshold. Oh, that's a word right there. I'm going to have to do a series on the threshold. Place of separation, right? And, and notice, it's not this place of separation in the field. It's the place of separation in the church. See, we don't. Hmm to the threshold of the house, and he called to the man clothed with linen, one word, you see, which had the writer's ink horn by his side. Church, when the glory of God's house is no longer upheld by the people of God, God's presence is removed from that place. Called Ichabod. The glory, I don't care, you, look, listen, listen, hear me well, hear me, hear me very clearly. I can have, and I do, the best band. I do, I don't even, 
I have the best man to read. I, I get personal, you see that? That pastor ain't yours. Okay, all right. The church has the best man. Right, right. I can have the best man, the best singers, best cameras, best audio, best live system. And church, let me tell you something. The glory of God still could have departed from the place. You can have all of the, um, what you call them when you're building a house? Um, you put the boards up or you're cleaning a building. What do you call it? Staff building, staff building. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because nobody was coming through. You can have all the staff building up, all the props up, and yet nothing happening in the place. You see how serious this is? So you don't come into Shekinah and say, well, hey, I ain't in it today, but everything, I'll just sit there. No, no, no. What are you bringing? What glory are you bringing? What, what level of presence and excellence are you bringing? Or are you just bringing you? Hmm. All right, all right, all right. The presence of God has departed. When God's presence leaves his house, there will be a day of reckoning for that place. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. And so it begins, verse 4, it reads, And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, <laughs> through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all of the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. In the midst of a people who have vastly ignored the heart of God, there will always be a remnant people. Lord, thank you, Jesus. There will always be. I got some remnant. I know I got some remnant people in here. What? That they're going, I don't care what's going on. You're going to worship God. I don't care what they allow in, in God's house. No, I know better than that. I know God has a standard that's better than I, mm -mm. And not only that, watch this. <laughs> oh, catch this one. <laughs> I know that since I am the temple of God, the house of God, there are just some things I won't wear outside of the house of God, the, the walls of the house of God. Come on. A remnant people remain. A remnant people refrain. A remnant people claim the law, the heart of God, and they claim it to the intensity that she's like God. He, he, and he who walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share. As we tarry there, none other has ever known. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Makes me think of Pastor Eugene Joe, one of our favorite songs. You see, that's, that's the personal relationship. That, that I am a part of the remnant because I'm never walking alone. God is always by, he is always by my side. And, and as it were, I always see the man with the ink horn. What's, what's she doing? Recording, come on. And what, what do you think I'm gonna have to make an account for every deed done in my body? Because there are angels making a racket, taking a racket. That thing scares me every day of my life. And Lord knows, I'm going to get some sort of licks. I never had licks on her but once. But I'm sure I'm going to get, I'm going to be like, oh, Lord, I miss you. You're right. Go but who's God's right? Other than that, I've got to walk. I've got to walk, understanding that he walks with me, remnant. God will spare the remnant. Huh? Yeah. Out of a whole sanctuary. 
God says, mark certain ones. Come on, somebody. Are you certain you're certain? I know you know about God. I know you know about the right thing, but are you certain you're certain? He calls for them. I know it's serious. He calls for them to be marked safe. <laughs> Mark me safe, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th this is a marking before the storm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Isn't that wonderful that God will mark us safe before the storm, before the test and trial, before the hurricane, before the rapture? Huh? Mankind are only marked safe during their storms, after the storm and after. But I'm so glad huh, that I serve God huh, and he can look through the portals of time and say, yeah, I can mark Maria safe. Huh? She's not only safe huh, in the year 1965, huh, uh, but she's safe in the year 20. 20. And because I know the heart of that servant, she's a part of the remnant. And in the year 2021 and 2020, whatever, that she is yet marked safe. And I believe that I've got under my hearing, I've got a people who understand what I'm talking about. And you're saying, yes, I'm safe too, Pastor. God can mark me safe too. God can trust in me. God knows, he knows, he knows that no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I experience, that I'm safe. I'm safe, y'all. Ah, yeah. Before the flooding, before the tsunami, before the rapture. God knows the hearts of those who have been grieving at the lack and loss of his standard in his house. Woo. God knows those who have been sighing. God, I just love this. God hears your sigh. And you just got, you, you, that's when you don't even have the words. And you, he hears your sigh and your cry. And listen, God says in his word, according to the prophet, prophecy of what he is and he is to come, that there must be a sign and a crying in his house. Everything ain't perfect as Shekinah. Everything ain't perfect in the worldwide church of God. And so there must be those that been seeing so good. I sigh every week. Lord, help me, strengthen me, God, strengthen me. That's a sighing and a crying. Something that grips your spirit, your grieving, because you say, I know God didn't mean it like this. God hears the sigh and God knows the cry. Listen, no matter what the houses of God are doing, there will always be those who remain true to the God who sanctifies. See? Sanctification, stay separate, church. Stay sanctified. I don't care if they invite you. You may think, oh, you want to be a part of the clique? Mm -mm. One day, every tick tock is going to be going. And there'll be no cliques in how. In case you think there's a how party. In case you think there's a stage. That's why the Holy Ghost showed me this morning. Getting ready. Some people think it's going to be a stage and, and lights and actions and all their superstars. Yeah, we miss heaven, but we're having a hell of a party. Ain't no hell of a party. There's only how. <laughs> Weeping, crying, gnashing, wailing, gnashing of teeth. You want that? Make your choice. Submit yourself. Come under the word of God. If not, how would be the portion? Don't give me no excuse. Don't give me no reason. Heaven or how? Come on now. Verse 5. Boy. You say, I understand Ezekiel and the prophets, you know, I, can't, I, 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 really, I really don't like preaching these messages. Ain't nobody high-fiving me today, nobody can be here. But I have to. Verse 5. And to the others, these are the ones that are not marked safe, y'all. To the others, he said in mine ear, mm. go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Don't feel sorry for nobody. Don't let them get you caught up emotionally. I know we want to park it at God is love. That's another thing. They showed, I watched this show, and the priest who didn't believe in marrying them, 
Then he turned and said, I've, I've heard from God. And he said, love is love. Ain't no love. It's a smiting, cotton, killing, separating God. Love that. I'm tired. I'll be getting back. You know, you're watching these shows. I'd be boiling over. Why? Because others are watching it and they've never been raised in the church. They don't know about the Holy Spirit. They just say, oh, isn't that beautiful? Yet let's drive along the road a bit further. If you know that God is love, watch this, then you ought to abide by the words of instruction from that loving God. How about that? You know, that's like saying, I love my husband, but no, I'm going to go with my boo. Oh, your husband's supposed to be your boo and your boo who? <laughs> okay, your wife. Oh, no, I call husband. Your wife, you call wives boo too? <laughs> yeah, your wife is the bae. That's my bae. <laughs> huh? Okay, I can't keep up with this modern stuff. That's just too much, too much, too much. I was just a girl to death, do us part. If we're gonna kill him, he's gonna kill me, or the Lord's gonna take us. What happened? Ow! Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen. This loving God has instructions, and we've actually got to obey God. But no, instead, you disobey God and expect to be rewarded. Expect to be loved in your disobedience and rewarded. That's what blows me away. You know you're wrong. I mean, I can, this is an example, but I, I'm using it for a reason. When we got married, remember we stayed at the Carlisle's and you hooked up that place for us? Nah, that place, it was old. Remember the shower? The shower was like this. Am I right about it? Like this. And if you rocked with it, it rocked. Remember that? <laughs> and you know, the, the rust, right? And we are out in the country. So you know, even though I wear glasses, you bought a little, little story. You take off your glasses when you had a shower, right? Oh, I didn't take my off till the last minute. I had to track every nook and crannies first, see if any bugs were coming out. Am I talking about it? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> huh? Humble beginning. Thank you, Elder Seaman. Humble. Look what the Lord has done. Stop me by I'll put a run one in a minute. What? What? And you want to look at what my husband built with his own hands before we became in leadership. And, and we're still paying for it out of our own wage shit. Ain't, ain't no church paying for it. Let me get it right. Get it right. Okay, I'm getting, I'm getting a wage, she's getting a wage, we're, 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 we've got a wage to go. But when I look at where God has brought us from, it's a reward. Sometimes, you, you, God, when is my reward going to come? When is my time going to come? Can I tell you that you're not in charge of time? Yes. So you have to wait according to his time? Yes. I'll never forget. The Carlisles. What, what game they taught us? Pinnacle? What's the card game? Boy, one game where they were Christians, but they let out a couple of words when they get mad with each other, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> this elderly white couple. It was interesting. I was like, no, no, Dad, don't you get that spirit? I'm thinking about me and him, right? Because when we whipped them, Iris, why you put that down? Iris, Iris. <laughs> and you know me, I ran loose. So you go right ahead and argue. You go right ahead. <laughs> Oh, I forget what it's called. But anyway, listen, I'm trying to tell you here that when you walk in obedience, you're rewarded. You know, now I step into uh, my, my own tub, that high. Ow! You know, I must need a ladder to climb into it. Oh, you don't know. I said, I remember when. I remember when we walked along. I've told you before, I'm going to tell you again. If you don't like it, close your ears. We walked along the streets of Tampa, picking up tin cans to take them to the recycling place until the police stopped us. <laughs> Tell us we can't do. Humble beginnings. 
For ten, that's why I just smile. Shekinah kind of rest. You better believe it. Come on, I love my home. You know that. Hey, you're the bullsh. Because I see. What? I go look over, go on the porch, and I count the three cedar trees that your church gave me. They gave me them. Right around the year one or two. One, two, and three is down there. I say, Kimaria, Jenna, and there's destiny. Oh, you don't know the type of times I have. Why? Because I'm grateful. I say, God, look, you're keeping them. And let me tell you something I do, and I speak this as a prophetic word even over my own family. Every storm does trees remain. Come on, somebody. You think I go out there and I check? I say, God, even when I don't know where they are, spiritually or physically, geographically, God, keep them, God. God, I see you've kept the cedar trees. Now keep them. See, that's the way you got to live with your mind always thinking on the spiritual. Hmm? And so here... God's people, watch this, are about to become victims. There will be victims, and be clear. Such victims know the way, for they were of the household of Israel. They knew better, and therefore should do better. They do not do any better, and now the providence of God unfolds. Oh, and God will not spare you because you're cute, talented, gifted, rich, or poor. God will only spare those who have been marked. Verse 6. Slay utterly. I mean, he could have just said slay. Slay utterly, old and young, both maids and little children and women. In other words, all the vulnerable. Hey, Masha, yeah, ah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I didn't, I didn't hear this earlier. So he wants me to say it now. Aren't we in that time right now? Huh? Huh? Right, especially back in March for Bermuda, it was the vulnerable, vulnerable, the old. Didn't didn't give it didn't say male or female. Now we're looking at some of the little some children are starting. Right, it's the vulnerable. You don't get spared because you're vulnerable. If you have not been marked, you will be utterly slain. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And, watch this, and begin. Come on. Begin at my sanctuary. God said, my house. Where they all gather on a Saturday or Sunday. And these days on a Friday night, whenever they want. Tuesday. Then they gather. Start right there. Then they began at the ancient men, which were before the house. Hold on. The ones that should know better, the ancient ones that should know about the testimony, that should have told their children and their grandchildren, oh, come on, come on. Yet again, boy, okay, yet again we see the destruction of little children. I don't like it, but it is what it is. God will know which children are marked safe and which children are not marked safe. Who are the children whose parents knew better, but done worse. Who are the parents? You know, parents, oh, I'm going to bring my child. I'm going to bring my child. Yeah, as soon as, soon as the church doors open. Oh, I'm so grateful. Who are the parents? They knew the way, but allowed their children to have their own way. Such parents have prepared, listen, have prepared their children to be sacrificed to a place of perishing. Uh, there will be no peace for the parents of the little children who should know better. That's what we're getting here. You think, I, I, don't, I don't take anything. That's what we're getting here. Screaming and crying. Can't even put into words. But the parents never showed them the way. Mm. You see, the providence of God is righteous. Woo. And true, God cannot and will not go against his own holiness to spare you or your children when he is allowing you to hear the prophet right now and allowing you the opportunity to change your ways right now before it is too late. Parents will have a direct hand in whether their children will spend eternity weeping and wailing in hell or whether their child will truly praise in paradise or rejoice in heaven forever. Verse 7. And he said unto them, defile, <laughs> this takes me to another level, defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. 
A sad image indeed, church, when those who should have been sacrificing now have become the sacrifice. Why? Because they refuse to do it God's way. The holy house is now defiled. It is out of order. It is no longer as it should be. And this brings me to my final point, point number three, the vision, prophetic. I read 8 through 11. And it came to pass while they were slaying them, and I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Oh, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of the fury upon Jerusalem? Then said he unto me, the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, the Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. And as for me also, mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the inkhorn by his side. Ooh, that's the ultimate report of things. Come on. Better than TNN. T misses it sometimes, but I'm telling you. This, this one here, well, he ain't going to miss it. Ain't going to make no mistake. Ain't going to have to come back and apologize to any premier or president. No, 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 no. Mm. Reported the matter saying, I have done as thou hast commanded. See, ooh, catch this. God just shared me. I'm telling you, God just, uh, he just said to me, in a split second, this is what he explained. He said, Maria, <laughs> you're going to get it. Watch this. He says, Maria, the reasons my angels are doing this because they ain't got feelings. All they know is to obey or disobey. Shama Okete. Angels just carry out the duty. That's why you had to cast us one third out of heaven. Oh, you had a choice and you chose to disobey out. You have no, talking about the angels, you have no right to your opinion. You don't know about salvation. You don't know about rejoicing. You just obey. And so when they go about destroying, they're not feeling sorry. They're just like, what you said, God? Yeah, okay, done. I, I'm looking, matter of fact, me, I missed it. I missed it until this moment. I'm looking at these scriptures saying, God, how can you do this? I'm looking at these scriptures saying, God, really? Children, live? I'm doing that. And God just shows me. That's why I don't have you doing it. Because you're going to give them a break. You're going to expend time. You're going to just try to understand everybody. This is the time of understanding. When Jesus returns, there's going to be no time for understanding. The judgment is carried forth. The judgment is carried forth. <laughs> I struggle, I'm telling you. Church, God is just. Today, God is warning us. God is letting you know that he never spares his own when his own are sinning. <laughs> People saying, they saying in his day, God see it not, I can get away with it. You know, I think I, I, I would do this because I would see people older than me. For example, I'll give you an example. Older women about to hit 40. All of a sudden now they're going to have sex outside of marriage because they have the, the time clock bombing, right? So they want children. And me, when I, I'm different, I'd be saying, well, maybe I can do, what, what more? no, I wouldn't do that. I would say something like this. Maria, what would happen if you did this? I'm saying, Jesus can't come straight when you're doing it. See how? Not everybody thinks that way. Me, I'm like the split second. Let me tell you something funny. I'll keep it in. It's funny. I think it's funny. I keep saying to God, like, his, like he likes me better than everybody else, right? I say to a God, I say, don't come in and get my bath because I won't have my clothes on me. You ever do that? I, I admit, I'm special. I'll be like, I don't want to be raptured naked. I want some clothes on. I, I think like that. It's, 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 it's just the way I'm built. I'm going to have a new body anyway, but everybody's going to see me. Okay, now, mm -mm. So to me, it's this all-seeing eye where I'm like, uh -uh, uh -uh. I, I'm tell you, I've been saying this since I'm a teenager. It ain't happened yet. You should, maybe I could have done some things, but I didn't want you to. But I'm just talking, right? Because I'm like, no, 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 no. As soon as you do that, it's split second. Some people say, well, he nursed my heart. I'm like, yeah, desperately wicked. And you just mad how your portion. <laughs> See, that's how I think. <laughs> what? What? No, 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 no. 
And so understand today, there will be consequences. And God uses this Old Testament moment of prophecy to warn the 21st century church in the year 2020. Do you see it? Do you have perfect vision? Mm. It, it, I know some of you think this. It cannot be just happenstance that in the year 2020, God shuts the world down. Don't you know he's saying this year will be a part of the oracles whereby I'll say it was in 2020 that I showed you this. I stopped the whole world to give the whole world an opportunity to change their ways. It cannot be. He could have changed any year. He said, no, do them the 2020. Perfect vision. Acceptable vision. God is warning. God is speaking to his church. We should know better. Yet they have taken up the profane thing in his house. And he will not accept that. He will not accept what you are offering. If it's not holy, it will not be unto God. It, it pained Ezekiel to see it. Yet God showed it to him in that day. And today, God is showing this to us. In that day, God will not have pity. He just won't have it. And God showed it to me like, you could carry pity. He said he just won't have it. He won't carry it. He won't have it at all. This is why we have shadows and types today. Because there is a day when God's role switches. Watch this. Switches from grace to the implementations of refusing his grace. On that day to come, God, what, this, what's your sentence? It's what happened in Ezekiel State. On that day to come, God will defile his own house because they have changed what he said to what they wanted said. They changed God's words and meanings, not understanding that God stands by his word to perform and not our word. On this day, God will have no pity, pity, shamal, compassion, spare. <laughs> there is coming a day, church, when a caring, compassionate God will have no compassion and he won't care. And he won't spare. Don't let that day overtake you as a thief in the night. For on that day you lose big time. Eternity you lose. While it is daytime, save the children. Mark them as safe. Parents, you will not be able to mark them safe if you have not been marked safe yourself. Director. Don't let the destroyer appear to do his work. And let them catch you with your work undone. You know, why you do so much, Pastor? Why? Because he gave me the ability to do it. And if he gave me the ability to do it, he's saying, I'm watching to see if you're doing it. <laughs> I thought about it this week. You thought I wouldn't want to just shut down for three days, sleep three days straight. But I will not, as long as there's work to be done. Hear me. I will refuse a holiday because things must be done. And so listen, again, don't let the destroyer appear to do his work and let him catch you with your work undone. Choose Jesus today before Michael the archangel and his army of heavenly messengers carry out the work of destruction. Make your choice today to serve Jesus Christ with all of who you are, be marked safe. That's all it's about, church. Man, I'm 55. Less years to go ahead than what's behind. Is it true? I was thinking about it this week. I said, how much good energy, strength you got, Seaman? 15, 20 years of real good uh, steel, you know? I said, you got some work to do. Are you marked safe? Are you ensuring that your children, your grandchildren, your godchildren, your little cousins? <laughs> this is not the time in the year 2020 
to avoid certain topics because it's gonna get touchy. This is, I will embrace the topic because I care about your soul salvation. Ha, yeah, I know you be, be mad at me for a hot minute, be mad at me for a day, you'll get over it. But I want you to know that if you don't make heaven your home, you may be separated from your children forever. But you told me you love them. If you don't choose Jesus, do you know that most teen children end up going the way of their parents eventually? Question, why is it difficult to get teenagers into church? Because the parents are not in the church. Because <laughs> when I was in the church and my children were teens, they were with me. Am I right out of James? Are they marked safe? Will the children be caught up in the rapture? Or will they start pulling on their parents' coat, shirts, and saying, what's, what's going on? How come that's it? Why, why you didn't make me go with grandma? Why you didn't make me go with Nana and Papa? How come you let me? How, how you let me? This guy, 20 year olds. How you let me tell you what to do when I was a child? as they miss heaven. You don't think the world's getting worse? <laughs> I see at least double the amount of young black males not working as I drive. <laughs> Woo! So here's the question. First is salvation. That's the ultimate mark, the mark of salvation. The blood of Jesus applied to your life. Is there one in this house called Shekinah Worship Center? You don't know Jesus Christ to the pardoning of your sins. You've never said, God forgive me of my sins. Jesus come into my heart. You've never done that. Today is your day. Hey. Today is your day. The messengers are writing it down. You'll never be able to deny that you had this opportunity. Is there one who needs to name Jesus? I want to get saved today. I want to be a Christian. 